Did you see the AMD Threadripper 5000 announcement? Oh, I did. And I'm really excited. Uh, but there's a lot to talk about. And uh, I don't actually have one. This is just going to talk about the things that AMD talked about. Let's dive in. AMD Threadripper Pro. Now, we're hearing an announcement about Threadripper Pro, not Threadripper. This is presumably the WRX80 platform, but the first most important piece of news here is going to be Lenovo. It's, a, it's kind of a Lenovo unlock exclusive, uh, just as when Threadripper Pro launched and it was part of a Lenovo workstation. That's the biggest news here. It's going to be available very, very soon, a little bit later this month, directly from Lenovo. You're going to be waiting a little while before you can pick up one of these not from Lenovo. I asked and the answer was second half of 2022, which means probably you should go ahead and buy the Lenovo system if you're in a really big hurry. Now, I've been rocking a 32 core Threadripper system as my daily driver for, well, since they launched. And it was so good that I bought several more to use at the office with my own money. Uh, 32 core CPUs. And that turned out to be pretty prescient because then the prices went up because <laughs> they're that good. They're that good for workstation parts. And Threadripper Pro, a 5000 series, I mean, we can, we, we know what the performance is going to be because we know what those Zen 3 cores are going to be because, you know, I've, I've built those server workstations, the Swerk stations <laughs> based around Milan server CPUs. But this, this is a truly a workstation part there's no fooling around. I mean, if you look at the really nice motherboards that I reviewed, I tried to get my hands on the Super Micro, but knew I canceled my order. I'm still waiting on that. But I also had the Gigabyte and Asus WRX80 motherboards. They were fabulous, fabulous motherboards with tons of PCIe slots using all 128 lanes. That's no different here. AMD is talking about their performance uplift in artificial intelligence, and visual production standards, generative design adoption, and aging infrastructure like failure prediction. We've had some bridges collapse because we might have repurposed some money from road maintenance to green initiatives. And then the bridges were like, okay, let's just, you know, fall and not, not really do anything. 300 Threadripper Pro customer wins. Aston Martin, Binion, DreamWorks, Sonos, Goldman Sachs, Epic Games. Predator Cycling, yeah, I mean, Threadripper has become the workstation part since it launched, since the 3000 series part really launched. I mean, okay, Threadripper launched, you know, with the 1950X, 16 cores, and it was a monster, don't get me wrong. And then the 2950X, incremental improvement. The 3000 series Threadripper CPUs blew the doors off of everything. And Threadripper Pro really put a cherry on top, because if you're willing to drop that kind of cash on Threadripper, and Threadripper's got your attention, you might as well spend a few extra bucks and get Threadripper Pro for all of the other features that you get, not the least of which is error correcting memory. And AMD likes to put that in their slide, you know, leadership in the North American market share for workstations. They've got a slide about that. I do note, there's a footnote here, mobile workstation portfolio expanding in 2022. AMD likes to tease little things. There's little details here in this slide deck, and we'll get to that. Andy's got this slide up to 67% lower power per core, up to 39% faster rendering, 2x better performance to power ratio. That's comparing a 5995WX, that's a 64 core monster, to two Xeon Platinum 8280 processors. Well, now the 8380 is what's current, and the 8380 is a substantial performance improvement over the 8280. It's going to be interesting to see how this stacks up to the 8380 once I get my hands on it. Just a quick recap, when you move from Zen 2 to Zen 3 cores, in a server space, when we're talking about a lot of cores, the performances may be not quite as dramatic. When we went from the 3950X to the 5950X, on the desktop for single thread and low latency, which is an accomplishment with chiplets and everything else for the architecture, AMD not only closed the gap, they blew the doors off of everything that we'd ever seen before on the desktop. On the server platform, <laughs> Threadripper 3000 basically did that. Twitter for 5000 continues the trajectory by upping the clock speed from 4.3 gigahertz max boost to 4.5 gigahertz max boost. It's still 6428 cores, but 64 cores on the desktop in a single socket is crazy. It's still 256 megs of total cache, but a single core can access the full 32 megabytes. As we saw on our Milan testing, you have some of those Milan CPUs that are 16, 24, 32 cores. But they still have all of that cache. And so you end up with a CPU that has oodles and oodles of L3 cache. And for some jobs and some workloads, 
that's a huge improvement. The 5000 series also improves over the 3000 series by implementing AMD Shadow Stack. Now, AMD Shadow Stack has been in Zen 3 products for a while. As far as I know, I think Windows Server 2022 is the only thing that takes advantage of the Shadow Stack. I'm not sure if there are any patches for Linux. Is anybody working on this for Linux? I would love to connect with you. Maybe we can chat and do a video if you'd love to come and do a video, or maybe we can do a write up. If nobody's doing development on that, I'm willing to pay somebody to do development on that. Hit me up on the level one forums. That's a side conversation. because I'd love to have some, some demos of that. But Shadow Stack has been there since Zen 3 launched in uh, other products. So this is available on Milan and this is available on the Zen 3 uh, Pro desktop CPUs. Probably pretty much every Zen 3 CPU. I asked AMD for clarification on that. And they said, no, it should, be, should, should work on pretty much all Zen 3. But we're doing some homework to try to figure out the particulars. What Shadow Stack is, is it's a second copy of the stack. So if there's some kind of processor vulnerability that takes advantage of stack manipulation, we may be able to detect that using the Shadow Stack. But I'm not sure if that raises an exception or how that's implemented or if it depends on the operating system to implement it. It seems like Microsoft is saying that that's implemented in Server 2022. We still found a couple references to it. Still looking into that. That could be a really interesting uh, addition to their security platform. So stay tuned for that. And there's a new addition to the family. Now with regular Threadripper, there was a 32 core and a 24 core, but there was never a 24 core Threadripper Pro. We had 16, 32, and 64 cores, as well as a 12 core. Well, now we're working with 24 cores again in the Threadripper Pro, the 5965WX. 24 slash 48, up to 4.5 gigahertz boost, but hey, the boost frequency is 4.5 gigahertz across the board. That really is just bananas. And, the 3945X with 12 cores has a base clock of 4.1 gigahertz. Remember Milan, the best you can hope for in the most expensive Milans is a 4.0 boost. Most of the time it's 3.35. You can get 4.1 boost on the, on the wacky eight core Milan part, which is 32 megs of cache per core. Like each it's eight chiplets with only one core active on each chiplet. And here we have a 12 core monster 280 watt, 4.5 gigahertz. I really want to build a workstation out of the 3955 with a four gigahertz base clock because that's probably just crazy. Four gigahertz boost clock? That's just, that's, that's crazy. And every single CPU, the full 280 watt of the SP3 socket. AMD shared a slide with us that is the performance uplift in Autodesk Maya. No doubt this is a best case scenario for the AMD platform, but you know, 30 to 50% better versus a Xeon W3335. That's pretty impressive. I'm also noticing that, that AMD is noticing the segmentation in uh, their various workload markets. So software compiling and AI training and oil and gas exploration, you know, what's the geometry of those kinds of workloads? And so is this really instructions per clock? Is it really core count? Is it really memory bandwidth? Is it platform expandability? It really helps this. And so you see that with this little chart that they put together. Platform expandability could include things like PCIe lanes for FPGAs, or other accelerators, or it could include, you know, the ability to have more memory per socket, two terabytes. It could include a whole bunch of things around the whole geometry of the platform. But clearly, a lot of these jobs benefit from higher clocks and higher core counts and higher instructions per clock. And it looks like AMD is poised to deliver that if we look at the base clock and boost clocks that the new Threadripper Pro CPUs are going to offer. Compilation is something that we're really interested in. A lot of a lot of people on the forum are always asking about this job or that job. Well, Chromium and Unreal Engine, up to 40 and 37% faster, respectively, versus the Xeon W3375. A lot of the time, these compile benchmarks ultimately are cache benchmarks. So the faster you can feed the processor, the more compiles per unit time you'll get. It certainly looks like that 64 core monster, the 5995WX, I have no problem chewing through those jobs. AMD also shared two quotes, one from Nick Rasmussen from uh, Industrial Light and Magic and the other from Paul Lambert, a two-time Academy Award winner. They're already using Threadripper Pro. They're, it's already in their hands. They've been helping qualify the new platform. And the performance uplift they're seeing in programs like After Effects, Chaos, V-Ray, and Autodesk Maya is pretty impressive. AMD also tested Creo, SolidWorks, and KeyShot. Again, 25%, 200% faster. Very impressive. Autodesk Revit, AutoCAD, and Corona Renderer. AMD's got the attention of all of the companies that are doing all of this, uh, you know, my butt's on the line, my engineer certification is on the line software. 
you can't refer to yourself as a civil engineer unless you meet all of this criteria. You have to depend on your tools in order to be able to do the job. Autodesk is one of the main companies behind that and behind the simulation and behind the engineering. And Autodesk looks to be behind Threadripper Pro in a big way. AMD gave us another slide sort of breaking down performance up and down the stack of all of the CPUs in the Threadripper Pro for Unreal, After Effects, Chaos V-Ray, and Revit. And again, very, very impressive. There are modest gains in some workloads like Revit, RFO, it's lightly threaded, but still very impressive. AMD provided another performance comparison against two Platinum 8280s. I can't wait to repeat some of these same tests against the dual socket 8380s that's on the agenda. But for last gen's 8280s, this, these are pretty impressive uplifts. Twitter for Pro for this initial launch is going to be in the Lenovo ThinkStation P620. Full spectrum performance with 64 high performance cores, highly versatile, high memory bandwidth to tackle your complex tasks. It should look physically identical to the previous P620. This is really just a refresh. But Lenovo has been qualifying this platform for quite some time. I mean, if you look at the, the end notes, January 31st, 2022, January 31st, 2022, these have been uh, percolating for a while, but I think that's important. You know, a lot of those professional customers, they don't want something that's rushed. They want something that has really, really been super well qualified. And that's why AMD is a little bit cautious with this launch. Lenovo sticking its neck out there and saying, okay, we've got our platform qualified. It's turnkey. Um, you're not going to have any weird problems because we build the entire system. Here you go. It's good to go. Now, you know, again, second half of 2022 will be available more for the enthusiast market and the DIY segment and that kind of thing. But for right now, the Lenovo P620. If you want to pick one of these up, you pretty much got to get the Lenovo workstation. One other thing I was hoping that we would see is a Threadripper Pro CPU that uses the uh, Milan X V-Cache so that we'd have an even higher end Threadripper Pro that has 96 megs of cache. That's gonna be a CPU that shows up for very specialized compute workloads. Didn't really see it or mention of it. And of course, AMD can't comment on future products or possible future products. So we don't really know anything about a possible Threadripper Pro coming later that, that may have V-Cache. I mean, Surely Milan is around the corner and surely the 5800X3D with the V-Cache that AMD has been teasing is right around the corner. But for now, mum's the word. Of course, in the meantime, I'm pretty happy that Threadripper Pro 5000 is finally here. Can't wait to upgrade my system with lots and lots of Zen 3 cores. Not that there's anything wrong with the Zen 2 cores in the uh, system that I'm rocking now, but uh, that 4.5 gigahertz boost clock, really looking forward to that. I'm one of those level one. I'm signing out on me in the level one forums, especially if you want to help put together a uh, shadow stack demonstration. I want to build a little test program. Maybe get some patches into the Linux kernel for that if they're not already there. Signing out and I'll see you there.